What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the Project Elixir official ROM based on Android 12 and this is a build by Saurav who used to build the Pixel Plus UI for the Redmi Note 7 Pro and it was really one of the best ROMs out there for the Redmi Note 7 Pro and here we have the first November 2021 beta build of the Project Elixir ROM based on Android 12. So let's begin this video with this GRS build of the Project Elixir ROM and you can see much more like the notes and stuff and other things from right here and you can donate to the developers from the description box below and I'll mention the particular orange box version that I have used over here and let me tell you the flashing procedure a little bit if you have a custom ROM installed and your storage is encrypted you just wipe cache talvik system data and vendor and then you can go to the files or the install section then from there just flash the firmware file I have flashed here the 1205 latest Indian MIUI firmware after that I flashed this ROM and after that I flashed the fcrypt v3 and that worked super fine yes my recovery is still booting fine do not worry about recovery getting stuck or something for me at least my recovery still boots so right now let me show you the about section here we have the android version is of course android 12 you keep tapping on it as you can see this clock appears if you make it 12 o'clock you get this android 12's easter egg and it looks beautiful let me go back from here and the device maintainer is again sort of and the project elixir version is 1.0 so this is kind of an initial build i would say the security patch is still of october 5th 2021 the stock kernel here is the excalibur plus and the snx status shows as enforcing now if you go into the system panel here we have the gestures and if you go into that you will see there is the swipe take screenshot so let me show you actually if it works or not as you can see when you take a screenshot it will show you capture mode option if you have some scrolling area and right now as you can see you can select that particular area and you can take a long screenshot just like this and you can mark up stuff if you want to just by clicking on this edit button so these things are there for the screenshot and that too is working perfectly fine with a three finger screenshot gesture and here we also have the one handed mode so that is working perfectly fine do not worry let me go back and here we have the system navigation gestures so full screen gestures are of course there you can go into the settings and you can see the left edge right edge customization so if you invoke assistant is there let me do this from the corners of the screen and if you go into the settings of it as you can see this is enabled so right now if i go into the home screen and say ok google as you can see the google assistant is working perfectly fine here so you should not worry at all about the google assistant the voice trigger is working just fine and of course you can use the two button or three button navigation if you want to let me go back we have the quickly open camera and the prevent ringing stuff if you go into the press and hold power button we have the hold for assistant option if you want to use that for some reason and the default keyboard here is gboard on this gapps included build and this is how the settings panel looks like and if you go into the home screen this is how my home screen looks like of course we have the pixel launcher let me show you so as you can see this is the pixel launcher if you go into the suggestions yes you can disable the suggestions if you want to and here on the home screen to the left we have the google's discover page and swiping down anywhere in the home screen gets you to the quick setting or the notification panel and it looks beautiful but even though when you have the dark theme disabled the quick setting panel still stays dark i mean in the background if you are noticing so that's how it is as of right now we still have the screen recorder and stuff you can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time you can disable the camera mic access you can enable the nightlight if you want to everything is just working flawlessly no issues whatsoever all the animations are pretty smooth and as you can see in the home screen the widgets the clock widgets are working fine this is a new clock widget and you get the new clock and yeah just notice the animation how beautiful it looks whenever you're swiping up and even the calculator app is there and if you want to see the animation over here as you can see once you're scrolling down it looks like this and i have enabled these themed icons that you can enable from here let me show you from the wallpapers and styles if you scroll down more you can enable the themed icons from right here and we can customize the app grid to up to like this 5 by 5 option and of course we can change the wallpapers from here i have been using this wallp apps wallpaper you can change the accent colors or the default accent color will be based on your current wallpaper so that is just great and you can also go with the basic colors if you want to and of course you can enable the dark theme if you want to and the brightness slider works just fine no issues whatsoever and of course in the app drawer you can search for any particular app and things will appear over here you can even search on google from this particular search section so right now let me show you some key features about this rom well you get the safety net passed right out of the box on this rom and that is just great you can use banking apps like google pay right out of the box over here you have no need to flash magic or something also the ir blaster works great here so you should not worry about it 
The DRM info stays L1 so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p here. But some things that I'm still missing, I would say there is no double tap to sleep or stuff like that. Things like the battery settings, here is how it looks like. We have this big battery bar and this big battery front which shows how much percentage you have left. And we have the battery percentage enabling option right here. Adaptive battery preference is there and if you go into the battery settings or the battery usage, you can see the full battery usage from right here. You can see the screen on time and stuff but this is a 24 hour kind of thing. The battery life I would say would be decent, you can get 4 plus hours of screen on time over here depending on your usage and fast charging also is working fine here you should not worry. In the sound and vibration this is how it looks like and this is how the volume panel looks like by the way. You can increase or decrease the volume just like this and of course we have a power menu from right here in the quick setting panel. We don't have the Mi Audio Dirac yet but we have the charging sound, charging vibration, touch sound, dial pad sound etc disabling option. Now let me go back and here in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the brightness level, the adaptive or auto brightness. The lock screen settings are there so you can enable the always on display if you want to for some reason. Let me go back we have the dark theme and the screen timeout changing option and let me scroll down more we have the night light and stuff auto red screen is there again double tap to wake is there but there is no double tap to sleep so right now let me show you actually the fingerprint scanner speed let me just lock the device with the power button so if i double tap as you can see double tap to wake actually works fine if i tap the fingerprint scanner now and as you can see it unlocks so i just enable the always on display and right now if i press this power button as you can see there is the always on display display the double tap to wake breaks somehow so right now if i tap the fingerprint scanner of course it still does that animation and unlocks the device pretty fine let me show you up close and yeah the fingerprint scanner speed it's not bad at all it's pretty fast and reliable fingerprint scanner experience i would say but again double tap to wake breaks when you enable the always on display and that's how it is as of right now and this is how the recent panel looks like you can take a screenshot and select some particular apps and you can go into the split screen mode if you want to from the security settings again we have the fingerprint scanner option and stuff and if you go into the settings we have the scramble pin layout the power button instantly locks and lock after screen timeout over here let me go back no face unlock no app lock as of right now so that's how the rom actually works i would say the performance is good enough but in the end of the score you might see it is a little lower when compared to other roms it's actually a lot lower when compared to other roms but that's how it is as of right now the end of the score goes really low and here is how the geekbench score and the cpu stress test benchmarks looks like to get you an idea about the performance Talking about the stock camera, I like this thing that we have this Google Camera Go Edition. Very decent pictures it takes. No issues whatsoever with the camera app. I am really liking this camera app actually. The camera quality is great. Takes a moment but yes, it processes good. And we have the front camera working fine as well. Let me switch to the front camera. And as you can see, the front camera is working perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. And also in the video settings and stuff, you can take videos. You can have the translate mode or portrait mode. Everything should be working just great. So this is what I like over here, you get the Gcam Go right out of the box and it is pretty usable in my opinion. And whenever you are using a camera app or something, it will show which app is using the camera actually. Or if it's accessing your mic or something, it will show up right here in Android 12 and that is really great. So this Project Elixir is really good ROM. It is available for multiple devices like the Redmi Note 10 Pro and stuff. I'll link them below if you want those. The Vaulty calling and stuff should be working fine over here. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth everything is working great. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Share this video with your friends if you want them to know about this project Elixir ROM actually handling Android 12 really really well. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.